Welcome back to the channel, I'm Stav, and today is part one of a two-part series of wiring and installing the radium search tank. Uh, I'm really excited to do this, and, and actually just yesterday I saw a big discussion on the forums about people asking about fueling, because there's a lot of fueling options out there right now, adding a second pump and brushless pumps and all the other gizmos, but it still does not solve the original problem that the RS3 has, even in stock form, that anytime you run less than half a tank of fuel, because of the tank's design, it does not, which if you'll start getting sputtering, fuel cut, um, and, you know, things like this. And you know, for guys that are going drag racing, you try to, you know, limit the car, or even any type of racing, you know, if you're taking corners, circuit racing, anytime you start taking corners and the cars are less than half a tank, people start having some really nasty fuel cuts. So, you know, all these added extra pumps and stuff, they work well if the tank is at full or three quarters or above, but when you're less than half a tank and you know, which is something a lot of people are driving on the street that way, you know, you don't always just keep your car at a full tank, um, you know, you start to develop issues. A couple years ago, we had very similar issues in our B5s and I think George, is the, George had the issue, so he reached out to Chris Green at USB Motorsports and uh, Chris Green said that in their car they had an issue and they ran a radium surge tank. So George bought a radium surge tank, I think it was a two tank, uh, uh, pump uh, pump system, same exact housing surge tank uh, that we're running now, and it fixed all his issues. I now run that same system with a third pump in my B5 and have absolutely no issues. So of course, when we had the same issue in our RS3 when we were drag racing, now that we're going to this extreme and we're going to a, a return system, which a lot of you guys are actually doing because you guys upgrade the fuel lines, you know, on their big power kits, you know, uh, it was it was a no-brainer for us. And uh, one of the things was. A, how to wire them, should we, you know, where do we get the power from, how do we stage them, and I plan on showing that today f with Cyvex. So, uh, and I'll even explain to you and go into a little detail if you plan on running it like with DS1 or even a stock ECU, and even talk about some things like hop switches and whatever, but uh, I'm gonna show you guys what we got, the price we got it for, um, and you know, hopefully this helps you guys when you guys go to wire your setup or if you're thinking about what to use, so. Uh, Let's get started. This is the radium surge tank. Now this little small silhouette has three pumps inside of it, all being able to be staged. They were nice enough to send us some photos of it during production and we'll post it up right here. Um, what's really nice about this whole setup is that it's a small silhouette, it could fit anywhere. You could hide this and I'm gonna show you exactly where we're gonna mount it inside the, uh, well, I'll show you guys in a few seconds uh, where we're gonna put it. And um, what's really nice about it is it's small, it's compact and this basically will, it, these three pumps in here can uh, supply up to 1800 crank horsepower the way we have it set up right now with the pumps we pictured. Now you could actually upgrade to about 21 to 2200 um, horsepower if you upgrade to let's say the Hellcat 525 pumps, but we decided not to go through it because you know th those are take even more uh, amperage so and you know we're not gonna you know get to 2100 I don't I, I don't know maybe George is crazy who knows. Um, but one thing we also picked up here is we picked up three of their individual relay kits now the reason we went three different relays is because we're gonna we're gonna stage every single pump so all three pumps will not be running at the same time and we're just gonna essentially you know wire let's say one pump to run it at one time the second one will be turned on at you know uh 26 22 psi and the other one will start you know being turned on 35 psi you know all depends how we get with tuning but we don't necessarily have to run all three of the pumps at the same time which is a really nice feature because it does give you the ability to stage them right here and i'm going to show you guys how to wire them how to go about doing it now in these kits they give you a five pin relay which is you know really nice high quality hella which is you know an oem brand type uh uh, relay. I'm going to show you guys also how to wire it with a four pin relay because that's essentially all you're going to need anyway. And even though we're going to basically have Cyvex ECU control this, I'm going to show, I'm going to explain to you guys how to wire this with DS1, um, with stock ECU, just different options that you could use if you're, let's say if you don't have a standalone or a capable ECU at the moment that's capable of doing it. So there's, you know, you definitely still have options. It's pretty easy, pretty nice kit. And I think we picked this whole up for like $1,100 for shipping, which is still like a third of the price of what those brushless kits cost. And this is a complete solution that will, you know, bolt up in the corner and I'll show you guys where we're gonna mount it. Hides, fixes the fuel tank issue, fixes your fueling issues. You'll never need, you know, anything more and your car will be ready to go. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's the whole setup. Pretty easy, pretty simple. Let's get started. Uh, one really nice feature about the RS3, and we'll show you here, is we're gonna put the surge tank hidden in here. So uh, as you guys see, uh, 
you know, tight little compartment, nothing goes in here, but it's easy to run all the wires, hide everything, and it's a very simple run for the wiring to go all the way down through the foot panel and to, you know, into the ECU over there where we have it mounted in the glove box. Uh, so, you know, very clean design. You close it up here, you know, from the trunk, nobody will know that you have a surge tank in there. Nobody will know that you, you know, have all this extra fueling. And again, you know, it is, it is definitely not an internal setup, but we all know, for anybody that watches this video that's into RS3s knows that the in-tank setups do not work below half a tank. So uh, this is going to be a solution, and let's start wiring it. I'm going to pull this panel right here to show you guys how we're going to wire it, where we're going to place all our relays. Obviously, even though we're going to wire it and we don't expect any issues, we still want to make it serviceable and easy to get to down the line if we ever run into any problems. So let's get started. Update, um, so took off that panel back here. Ended up um, a couple little bolts, little little pins right here on top. You have to pop them out, back them off, and then they'll just basically come out. And there's, there's some triple squares here. And then right here, I think it's like an eight millimeter, could be wrong. Uh, but so the surge tank, I ended up being able to get it pushed back there. You end up having to grind right here. Let me move this here. Now, you don't necessarily have to grind. You could build like a little pedestal system, a spacer. But if you see right here, the um, right there, the metal, I, I basically cut cut i didn't completely cut it i just banged it down with a, like a hammer and now it's flat and this radium surge tank can go in and sit there and sit on a flat base instead of you know rocking back and forth so knock that down i think i'm gonna mount the relays either there or actually in here maybe behind this panel because it'll be the shortest run to the battery still debating on it but uh yeah i just want to give you guys a little update and now we'll talk about how we're gonna wire it all right guys so today's day two, I uh, got really tired on day one, we, we finished around 3 a.m. I started to realize that I was making mistakes that really wouldn't have happened if I wasn't, you know, so tired. So, we, you know, we gave up for the night. Let me show you guys the mistakes I made. So uh, I didn't show you guys before, but we were talking about where to mount the relays. The, you know, the pump's obviously going right there. Uh, we were talking about putting the relays possibly over here. And I thought that would be a good idea, but the only problem was fully accessing this part for, you know, let's say when we're at the track, we'd have to pull off this panel and there's like triple squares back here. You know, it wouldn't be the easiest panel to get to. So what I ended up doing is, let me show you guys right here. I end up putting the relays down here in the in this uh whatever this is like where you put all the um uh, the tools to remove your tire but obviously we don't run them anyway but the styrofoam and everything still fits without any modification down here so when you put the panel which i'll show you guys you know it looks like uh, spaghetti right now because we're in the middle of wiring so but it's a really easy you're able to pull this panel off and remove everything i ran the wire for the power right here we have the uh three uh 10 gauge wiring this will go to the battery Probably let's see uh, this panel right here because this is not this is non amp so it'd be pretty I mean non fused so it'd be pretty easy because again th these are all individually fused 25 amps. Uh, but the mistake I was making yesterday I started to splice the wires for the pumps and I tried using these like really fancy uh, wiring label kits but again I I put them on I end up putting three different size ring terminals on it this this is the proper one. This is too large. I don't know if you could see it so well in the video. And then, of course, you know, while you have it on, I didn't put the heat shrink over the the terminals. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna call it quits for the night, and we'll start up tomorrow. So you know, let's get let's get let's get started wiring so we can finish this off today and be done and uh, do it nice. But you know, just wanted to show you guys. Even Stav makes mistakes. <laughs> All right. So I want to go through the steps on how to crimp these wires. A lot of people have been asking, so I wanted to show you guys now that I'm gonna remake them. Uh, because I messed up yesterday. So what we, what we ended up purchasing, purchasing is one of those universal pre-labeled, uh, you know, uh, connectors. So like you get, to, it has all the fuel pump. I mean, it doesn't have anything for fuel pump. It has injectors, coils. It has these random auxiliary one, two, and three. So I'm gonna use these for, uh, you know, fuel pump wires so that if we ever remove them in the future, it's really nice and uh, clean. But, you know, it'd be actually kind of nice now that I thought about it, maybe to buy one of those heat shrink uh, label make makers. Uh, we, we might invest in one because that's actually a pretty darn good idea, I think. So I just want to go through and show you guys how we do it. And it has a plastic clear uh, casing. So we're going to put that last. Uh, put that one all the way down. Put number three on this. This is because this is pump number three on the wire. And then put that down. Then on top of that, we're going to put this uh, black sheathing that comes with the crimp. Put that on so you know we don't we can put that on and uh, here is the 
butt connector that we're using or you know uh, the eyelid connector that we you know when you put it on you want to make sure that it does not you know have ex you know excess uh copper here i mean it's not really going to hurt anything but it just doesn't look very nice basically want to make it just up into that line like this one is hold it tight and then we'll get our you know harbor freight crimpers here nice 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 all right, and you, of course, it says non-insulate. That's the side that you're going to use. And let's get crimping. All right, boom. Boom, 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 boom. And here, I'm going to give it a nice tug test. Doesn't come out. Then we're going to put our heat shrink over it. Mm, let's see. All right. All right. Boom, boom. Push it over. We're going to heat shrink it down. Put it right over it. So now, if it, you know, it touches anything, it'll be nice and clean. Clean it up. Boom. And then, of course, you know, most people use a, um, you know, a uh, heat gun. I use one of these really expensive lighters. Boom, 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 boom. And now you see it's nice and heat shrunk. Cool it down. Now we're gonna put our auxiliary three. So we know this is for auxiliary three pump. Let's put this on there, put it right over here. Nicely about a half inch down, let's say a quarter inch down. Now let's heat shrink that one. Oh, see, I touched it. <laughs> All right. Then you go on the other side, bam, bam, bam. And for the last step, you put the plastic covering over it, and that should be going right over, as long as it's not hot. You, you know, just make sure it's not hot when you're putting it over. And that's going to be the protectant for the auxiliary three. You're going to put that on, heat shrink it, boom. I mean, and this is going to protect it so it doesn't get dirty and it looks good in the future. So that's exactly how we had wanted it done and uh, came out pretty nice. Uh, I think it came out pretty darn nice. I don't know. Uh, tell me what you guys think. I think, you know, again, it doesn't say fuel pump, but at least when we ever remove them, it'll be labeled number three, auxiliary one, two, and three. Just wanted to show you guys real quick and uh, see what you guys think. All right. Let me, let me get, let me keep going. All right, so I wanted to show you guys real quick, um, you know, the different ways to wire this uh, fuel pump relay. Um, pretty easy, pretty standard. Uh, you know, again, you could use a four pin relay. Uh, these kits end up giving you a five pin relay because, you know, these are universal kits and it gives you the options to wire multiple different ways depending on how you decide to. You know, you could wire to the ECU like we are or you could have a hop switch. You know, this is all just different ways to wire it. You know, I, I usually use four pin relays for most things that I wire. I buy these little like relay kits from Amazon. You know, they're four pin. I like them just because the fact is I never remember these numbers. I always forget them and I have to look back at the chart. But you know, for a fact that you know that pin 30 is your 12 volt source. Pin 87 is what goes to your fuel pump, which is the blue wire. Your white wire here um, is your ignition, pin 86. And the black wire is the one that goes to Cyvex, or if you want to control it, you know, you can put this uh, mounted to the body, you know, ground it off to the body, and then once the ignition turns on, this circuit will kick on. All depending how you want to wire it. Like I said, we're going to use the ECU because we're going to stage all the pumps, and we want the ECU to tell this car, at, you know, at 70% duty cycle, turn on the second pump, at 80% turn on, the, you know, the third pump, and, or you know, whatever numbers we decide to go with, or the tuner that we use goes with, but again, very simple, that's, a, that, that's how you do a four pin relay. A five pin relay is pretty nice also because it gives you the options, you know, you basically have an extra lead here that you could, you know, use a switch or something like that to, to control it. But pin 30 is your 12 volt source, which is your wire back here. This is what goes to the battery, make sure it's fused. Uh, pin 87 is what goes to the pump, is your front wire here. Um, what's it called? Uh, this is your center wire, pin 87A, is not in use. As you guys see, we put not in use, no use for it. So you're gonna cut this off, don't even use it. Um, your blue wire here is your ignition on pin 86. This is what's gonna go to, you know, whatever gets powered up with the ignition. I'm gonna steal it off what do you call uh, one of the uh, fuel pump wires. And then your black wire here is pin 85. 
and this is what goes to Cyvex, and that's what completes the circuit. So, you know, very simple, very easy. It comes, it comes complete. It's, it's pretty nice because there are rather they are they do have a seal in here. So if you did want to mount this somewhere that you know essentially could get a little wet or you know has a possibility to get wet, these are sealed, so it should you know stay pretty good. But high quality uh, relay. I just wanted to give you guys examples on how to wire it. Now, you know, we're using the ECU to power this, but you could use something like a hob switch and then have that, you know, that black wire instead of going to the ground, go to the hob switch, or you could positive trigger it. All the same, all works exactly the same, just, you know, just different ways to do it. So uh, this is how we're doing it. I wanted to give you guys a little brief breakdown and let's start wiring. Hey guys, so uh, all the positives and all the grounds are in. Uh, all the positives have the white labels on them, and you know it's all now tight. We, we ended up running 10 gauge for the positive, 10 gauge for the negative. You should pretty much just match and make sure that you have the exact same, because uh, you know you you definitely want a good ground. Usually, I go back to the battery with everything. Um, you know, cause that's you know it's always like the best safe way to go. But on this case. Because right here, right here next to the hinge, there's an Audi grounding point right here uh, where all the body lights and everything else are attached. So this is right next to the hinge on the passenger side. Pretty short run, and it was pretty easy just to put like an eye hook on it and, you know, tie it in over here. So uh, just wanted to show you guys an update after we did the crimping, put the grounds right here, and, um, you know, pretty easy run, hidden pretty well. Uh, let's keep going. So for the battery cable, we essentially just follow the same exact steps. I don't have a label for battery, but it's pretty obvious and it's the only one that goes to the battery. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, just, I went to the local AutoZone. I picked up these uh, uh, eye, eyelid connectors for 10 gauge wiring or 8 gauge like there. And I ended up putting all three terminals to one eyelid, which is, uh, you know, crimped it down, put some heat, uh, heat shrink over it, double heat shrink it to make sure that it doesn't touch anything. But uh, came out really nice, uh, pretty clean. Like I said, you don't have to necessarily put it, but it does, you know, I think it does give a nicer finish overall so you don't see the exposed copper and, you know, g gives it a little bit of a release to, uh, relief to the wire. But uh, we have the panel back on. I haven't completely, uh, what do you call, put the, all the screws in, but I just wanted to show you guys how we have it. And here, I mean, we have it in. I'll put a light over here so you guys can see. And... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, th I think overall the wire came out really nice. Uh, we ended up running the um, ground wires, which go to the ECU, the same way as the body harness under underneath through here, underneath do uh, the door trim, all the way to the to the front of the car. And the relays, I think, came out really nice in this section. Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna go in from the inside and show it to you guys, because you guys can really see. Hey guys, so uh, just wanted to give you guys an in inside perspective so you guys can see exactly where the relays are mounted. Uh, once the styrofoam goes back in, you won't see any of this, so that's a really nice part. And like I said, if you need to be able to get to that panel, it all comes out really easy. But, you know, wanted to give you guys an inside perspective on exactly what you see from inside the car, from another angle, not upside down. And then, you know, I showed you guys the battery terminal. We did the same thing that we did to the top of the surge tank. We crimped a dash eight uh, eyelid here. I mean, not a dash eight, eight gauge uh, eyelid here. It fit all three wires into one ring terminal, which is really nice. Then heat shrunk it, so I think it came out pretty good. This will go on the battery um, to this specific location where I'm pointing at on the battery. Um, as you see, the other ones are actually fused, so I wouldn't try because I don't know what those go to. So you know, every fuse pump is already fused, so. Be, be better just to go to something that doesn't have an inline fuse to it so yeah i mean that's really the whole setup uh you know let us know what you think uh, once we put the floor pan back in uh, i mean the floor pan the floor covering you won't see anything not a single wire clean nice setup for the surge tank the battery out to show you and i put the panel back in hopefully you guys can see how exactly how it's going to look again you don't see any wires no relays everything you know once the panel back in you won't see the relays and the uh surge tank is back here we have it installed here i'll show you guys real quick and as you see because i have the, the light in there the the wiring is all run very clean the next step would be to plumb it and then we can turn this pump on because i don't know if you know there's any fuel in here if they test them i know they test the pumps so i don't want to turn it on until we have fuel lines connected but all the wiring's in, clean, labeled. We know which one goes to which uh, surge tank, which pump. It'll be very easy to track. Uh, once I get my label maker, I'll be able to label the relays. Even though I know exactly which one goes to what, I'd rather, you know, be make it very easy because anyone can work on this. And, uh, yeah, I mean, that's the end of this video, guys. So, uh, 
hopefully you guys uh really liked this video um you know we'll have part two coming up next george will start uh plumbing it then we'll mount it and be good to go so uh thank you guys for watching if you have any questions about what you saw here today uh, write it down in the comments. You could DM us if you plan on running a different setup with a different ECU or if you run, plan on running a hob switch, you know, and you have any questions about the wiring, you could definitely DM us. Thank you guys for watching. I'm Stav and this is my video.